What's up, YouTube? Today I have an amazing guest. I have Mike. A lot of you guys know him probably as Calcio Cards. It's a pleasure to, to have you with me on the Talking Cards podcast. And uh, before I, I start talking a lot about you, let's actually uh, let you make your presentation. And uh, welcome to, to the podcast. Well, thank you, uh, Andre. I'm, I'm thrilled to be on. Uh, this is exciting. And, uh, My pleasure. Looking forward to talking about soccer cards. I mean, people who would know me from YouTube know that I talk predominantly about two things, uh, one being Italian soccer cards, because uh, that's the league I follow the most. And uh, the second being, you know, mostly rookie cards of players. And I, I am of, in my background is technology, but it's more data science, right? That's my kind of profession. So I, I like to dive into the numbers and uh, analyze that from a soccer card perspective. Plus, I'm one of the few guys who's actually collected sports cards really from, from when I, as long as I can remember. So we collected big baseball and football collection as well. And then it morphed into soccer cards here, you know, more recently. Okay, no, that's that's great. Um, I've been following your channel for for a long time. I remember when you, you end up appearing on YouTube, and I thought this content is different than uh, than what we have in the market. I think your content is is a bit different than mine. Sometimes I, I don't agree with everything you say. I believe you probably shared the same with me. But I thought it was great to to have you on because in general, I, I truly believe you are a great asset for the community. And um, I was talking with you offline that uh, I believe you know how this works. I have five questions for you. Um, mm -hmm. we, we don't have to, to, to stay very attached to, sure. to them, but they are great entry points. So I will start with the, the number one. And this is probably one of the questions I, I'm the most curious about. Um, you have yeah. your own system to find undervalued cards, specific rookie mm -hmm. cards, and specific even more for Italian players, even though you sometimes go, go a bit off of, of that league. But uh, could you share the basis of that system? How do you find value when trying to prospect, basically? Yeah, so it's becoming more difficult as the card companies keep producing so many cards. Um, but the system has nuances to it, but I'll, I'll break it down to a couple key points, right? I'm looking for scarcity as the number one thing. Okay. And I will typically not buy a card of the current year just to make sure that all the product has been out, right? So then the other aspect I look for is I look for young players, typically a player who's going to score goals, typically sub 22 years old, 18, 19, et cetera. So I'm looking for players that have upside potential. And then I'm also looking for players that have a few limited amount of rookie cards. One, two, or three is kind of like the ideal, the ideal scenario. And then also guys that might have, you know, fewer numbered cards, things like that. That's somewhat of the basis of, of what I look at, um, you know, I don't want to go for like the guys who come out who are the hype guys, right? You know, um, you know I don't need Jude Bellingham because he came out hot or Pedri, right? Those guys came out very hot. And I think that they come out up here and a lot of times they go down here, right? I'm trying to find more or less some players underneath the radar that will go up. Um, and that's kind of the process that I use to find players. I think I talk a lot about Vinicius Jr. He only has a couple rookie cards. And that was one of my first guys that I kind of followed. You know, Sock is another guy uh, that has a few rookie cards. Some of the Italian players have uh, have few rookie cards, which, you know, makes it nice to invest in them. Um, so that's really the formula for me is to look for young players, right? To focus only on a few players, understand that. And then finally look at market cap. Now, I think this is where it gets a little, some people have a, a tough, tougher time understanding this, but if you follow stocks, you kind of understand understand it. Like the price of the card to me is irrelevant. It's it's the market cap. And I, if you follow card ladder and some other things that are coming up from a data perspective, right? They're trying to say, okay, if you add up all the all the rookie cards of player X, right? His value is, you know, $60,000 or whatever. Um, you know, you had that guest on the show would have been last week when people watched this and he mentioned about the Saka rookie rookie ticket card or rookie Kings card, right? The Panini Chronicle. That's a perfect yeah. example. And I think he said it was too expensive. Now, when I look at this from a data perspective, I, I, I look at it and say, well, there's only 82 of those cards or 92 of those cards graded. And the last sale of that card at a PSA 9 was 600. And if you time 600 by, by that, you basically get a market cap of that card around less than $80,000. Well, there's cards that have a market cap of a million dollars, right? And I think if you're going to be a good long-term star, you're going to have a market cap, your rookie market cap will be a million dollars, right? Um, okay. Jude Bellingham's is well over a million dollars. Holland's, he has like his 
finest card. I mean, if you'd add up its market cap and its refactors, that, that card alone is in the millions, right? So I say, hey, maybe Sokka's rookie rookie um, Pitch Kings card will be worth $200,000. And right now the market cap of that card is $80,000. And to me, that looks cheap. So I, I do kind of, that's how I analyze cards. Um, it's pretty data science and data driven. And I try to look at populations, try to be an expert on that card, try to find guys that can go up, right? I also look at some stats, like are they scoring goals? Are they getting goals? Um, Thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, are they are they shooting the ball a lot? Is there an opportunity for them to to increase? Vinicius Jr., I, the reason I found him is he had a lot of stats, was shooting the ball and goal, was beating a lot of people dribbling. He just wasn't scoring goals. And then he started to put it all together. So those are some of the things I look for. Market cap's a big thing as well. But, you know, I start again, at the beginning of this, is looking for guys who have a few amount of rookie cards. Um, if they have 60,000, I'm probably not going to jump in there. Okay, no, it makes sense. Uh, I think you end up explaining that uh, very well. Uh, um, the, the thing with uh, with your system, and uh, to be honest, you are quite ahead of most people because most people, they don't think about all of that stuff. Like, let's be real, they they basically see the player playing well and they go by, by the emotion. Uh, and, and emotions at the end of the day are powerful on, on this type of stuff. Uh, but um, sometimes, and this will be the, the counterpoint I, I would make against your uh, your system, and I would love to know your, your perspective, uh, but again, is it, it, working for you, and, and that's what matters at the end of the day, is that, um, let me just take my cat, because he actually <laughs> wants to appear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but basically my 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 counterpoint will be that uh, um, when performance tends to be the main uh, uh, variable, you know, associated with a lot of those new guys, you are totally correct when it comes to market cap. That's very important. I come from TCGs and specific in Pokemon. Everyone looks at not everyone, but a lot of people that try to invest in Pokemon and tend to look at market cap, how market can the market, uh, ca um, how much can the market can grow to get to that market cap to compare with the other card, et cetera, the other set. But don't you think when uh, performance is a variable that is so import important uh, for prospecting that uh, all the other components, they, they get a, a bit tricky? Because let's say your example of Vinicius Junior ended up playing out quite amazing. You are, and I have one question related with that. You are one of the first guys that started talking about piney treble. A lot of a lot of people think it was me, but no, I believe actually you had content uh, much. Uh, be, I, I did it after you. I, I'm almost sure about that. Uh, but imagine if Vinicius Junior did not perform well. You know, um, all the market cap uh, does not mean that much. Do do do, do you understand my, my well, point? One hundred percent. And when you're and you're into this type of thing, you call it prospecting, right? You're going to win some. You're going to lose some. Right? Exactly. And you're 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 even someone like me and who's watches it all the time, you're gonna lose more than you you win. So you gotta you gotta that's why I try to focus on the, the guys who are kind of under the radar. Okay. Um, because I there's opportunity for them to go up exponentially, right? Um because you're gonna have to take that with a grain of salt. You can't you're not gonna hit bad a thousand, right? Uh so it really is it really comes down to understanding that and being able to take some take some risk, right? You know, sometimes you hit okay. home runs. Right. I mean, I, I bought some Venetius Jr. cards for twenty five dollars. <laughs> right. And, um, you know, and sometimes you, they, they don't pan out or sometimes they might not pan, pan out. But you have to understand there's 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 certainly risk in this style of prospecting. I try to focus on guys who have limited risk, limited downside because they have so few cards that limits the downside. Okay. A lot of people have got burnt totally by Pedri and some of these other players yeah. who came out fatty. Right hyped up and they've and they've they've fallen tremendously i try to avoid that as best as i can so it is a limiting of the risk and that's where the 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 quantity of cards can kind of shield you a little bit but they do have to perform they do have to perform no doubt about it no no great uh, gr great explanation mike i i, I agree with you in, on that and uh, basically what i'm learning with you right now is is that you understand that is a risky market first of all and, and i think that's that's good to to be aware of. But uh, in you try to okay, it's, it's a risky market. But I at least I try to find some logic on that risky market. I try to to find some uh, some real fundamentals that uh, I still need that key component that is performance. But if that key component works, uh, all the others are also in, there 
for me to have a, a great uh, return. So I, I thought you end up explaining that quite well. And uh, even my, my counterpoint to you, you made sense what, what you said there. And, um, and, and I'm actually glad that you end up clearing that. So um, the question number two um, is a fun one. If you could go back in time and give you just one advice um, related with the soccer card market, of course, what that advice would be? Um, if you could go back in time and... Um, what you know right now, what will be the the best piece of information you could give to, to your younger self? Well, the younger self would be would be to buy the Ronaldo rookie cards. <laughs> the Messi <laughs> or cards, right? But but listen, no, this but is a good example. Okay, okay. Do not go that far. You know, imagine <laughs> Let's say you are doing uh, videos for more than, than one year on YouTube. Even let's say one year ago, two years ago, what would be that advice? Because otherwise, uh, everyone would say the same by the, the key cards that but, are but, 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 but listen, listen, Andre, I, I had five, five Ronaldo stickers, okay? Rookie stickers. No, that, that's and crazy. I up, and I ended up selling, and that, they were 100, I bought them for like $100. And I ended up selling for like, you know, $300, right? $200. But one, um, one, I actually kept long enough because someone actually didn't pay. And it, it went like two weeks, it went from um, 400 to like $4,000. Okay. Um, but, you know, I would say the best advice for anybody um, is to, but that this, that's valuable because it's rare, right? It, it's to focus on rarity, focus on, on thing. I always say this back when I was a kid, like I was 11 and 12 years old, right? I used to love Mike Piazza. People might know who he is. He's a great baseball player. And I bought thousands of his cards. I have probably the biggest collection of $1 Mike Piazza cards in the world. And to me, I, I would much rather have his like five best cards than to have $2,001 cards from an investment standpoint. They sit in binders, right? I literally have $2,001 Mike Piazza cards. That's <laughs> crazy. And, but he's and funny, you, know? you know, if I could tell myself, I would have been like, well, instead of putting that money there, save up and focus on a few of his good cards. And I think it would, that would have been an, uh, that would have been the advice I would give my younger self. And I think it's applicable to a lot of people watching the show or diving into this market now. Like I, I think quality over quantity, not everyone likes that, but that's, that's, that would be my advice and to focus on the rare stuff. I mean, luckily for me in the soccer card with the soccer card, boom, I, I kind of shielded myself because I focused on a few things and a few low pop things. So no, That's the advice I would just give, broadly speaking, quality over quantity. I agree with that. Specific because uh, um, if you are more an investor slash, slash flipper, I think uh, quality makes sense. Because, But if you are a collector, and uh, I, I had a video a couple, of, uh, a couple of months ago about this, that as a collector, sometimes quantity is more fun than, than actually quality because there is that, that thing that you want to buy more and more and more. But um, if, if you're my... 15 and 20, 22, <laughs> maybe, right? <laughs> yeah, but but in reality, it really it... depends on where you are. And I, 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 exactly. I don't want to describe that to everybody. But no, I mean, no, some no. People yeah. might enjoy that. And some people who like who want to try to make a couple hundred dollars or make a couple thousand dollars, they probably should focus on the quality. But if you're no, just sure. collecting them, have at it. Yeah, everyone looks looks at the market different. Some people really do not care about money. Other people, they they, they still have to, to make sense when, when it comes to, to putting money in, in the hobby. So I, I would agree with, with your advice. Um, this is a question that I've been asking almost every guest recently, because I think it's important. Our market is, is in, a, in a spot that I, I find fascinating. Um, let's say in 2021, 2022, um, but specific 2021, most people are collecting for months or one year. Right now, we we already have collected for for more than two three years, and I think that that's amazing to to see how the perspective end up changing. You know, because one thing that I I always talked on my channel is the time in the market beats time in the market, uh, and when you put a lot of hours into into this community, into this into this hobby. I think you start uh, understanding that your thoughts one year ago maybe not be the best uh, for for today's market, uh, and what you thought uh, end up being so sure that will for sure I will always be following this uh, this idea, this uh, th this concept that I have in my mind. Over time, the market teaches you something something different, uh, and I think a lot of people and this goes back to to your to to the advice you end up sharing. 
are, are feeling what you said there, you know, that uh, instead of quantity, I should add folk in quality because quality items at the end of the day, as long they are scarce slash rare, they, they, they will always have a market that probably outperforms the, the other stuff that uh, can easily be, be found. Uh, I think, uh, I, f- I think basically that's, that, that's great advice. And, uh, and, and, and if someone is listening to, to this and never thought about this type of stuff, I think it's a good time to start thinking because I can see our market moving more into quality versus, versus quantity. If you are a pure collector, this probably is not even the, the talk for you, but as an investor, value investor, that, that's great advice. Mm-hmm. Okay, so moving on to the question number three, and this is a, a topic that I, I believe you you like to talk about. At least you 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 made a couple of videos already about this. You are one of one of the first persons I saw talking about Panini Trouble, um, Panini Trouble 2018. For people that are not aware, is a is a one time set. Um, is a be- beautiful set. Exactly that. That's that's Ronaldo Ronaldo Baez. But even Baez, I would love to know your your. That's messy. <laughs> but even Baez, I would love to know your opinion because I, I believe you are a collector of, of Baez right now. Uh, since you see some some scarcity, some rarity there. But uh, what are the main points that make you believe the this set can can perform well long run? For example, like a Prism 2014 or even a Top Chrome yeah. 2017. Hey guys, quick pause on this one. First of all, hope you are enjoying the video. If that's the case, do not forget to leave a like. But let me share with you two things. The first is I have a Patreon community that is growing super fast. I put a lot of content there. If you join right now, you pay around $10, but you have access to more than 100 exclusive videos. It's an amazing place to learn about the soccer card market and you also support the channel. Link below the video and also in the comments. The second thing is my Discord server. We are more than 1,000 members. I'm gonna say it again, 1,000 members. And it's an amazing community, an amazing place to interact with me, to interact with other collectors, to learn and share about the soccer card market. Uh, Similar to Patreon, link will also be below the video. If $10 is a lot of money to you, don't feel pressure to join the Patreon. For me, it's not super relevant. Of course, I would love to see you there, but at least join the Discord, that's totally free and is an amazing place to to learn about the soccer card market, like I said a couple of seconds ago. Now let's continue with this one and I hope you have fun. Okay, so it's it's such a unique thing, okay? And for the record, I was only following Venetius for, I I missed the whole aspect of it. And then like out of the blue, it it got hot before I even talked about it. I was just looking for the Venetius caught rookies. And then all of a sudden, I had people asking for like offering like $60 for a base for Ronaldo. And I'm like, I've never, you know, and I'm like, wait a minute. What, what, what? And it just happened like that it happened so quick. Um, and, and, but the set is so unique and it is, it's tough to compare it to other product. Okay. Um, for a couple of reasons, right. It's one, it's one off. It's only happened one time beyond that. Um, it's spread across the whole world. Right. I'm trying to collect the whole set. I'm six cards away from having the whole set. I don't know if anyone else has the whole set. No one has ever, I haven't been able, anyone able to confirm that. Um, but it's spread across the world. Most of it is in Asia. Um, that's where I end up having to get most of the cards from. Um, it has beautiful imagery. And I personally believe looking at the numbers and running the numbers that the base set has a pop of less than 350. It could actually be less. You, this is the messy, you know? And it has a PSA pop of 15, nothing graded higher than an eight. And the other thing is it has condition. Right. So to me, it, it, it's like, it's so fun to collect because you're, you're chasing them around the world. They're beautiful cards. They have condition rarity. So I mean, if, I mean, these, an eight Ronaldo is a great grade. It has some really awesome rookies. I mean, we talk about Venetius. It also has, this is the, you know, one of uh, Ruben Diaz's only rookie cards. Um, so really hard to find some of these cards. Um, so it has all these different things and it only takes a few people who, to want to collect it for it to go up in value because it's so scarce, right? If, if 20 people decided tomorrow, I'm going to collect this set. Well, then it, it really gets interesting because, right? because the, the, the quantity is not there. Like I said, it, it's been a hot set for two years now and only 15 messies are graded and, and those sell, I mean, they sell for a few hundred dollars. So from my standpoint, you know, I, I think, it, I think it makes a lot of, uh, a lot of sense. 
No, I mean, I I, I, I like the set also, so I'm, I'm kind of with you with in Panini Travel. Um, the thing with Baze, I'm not sure if you saw recently on Pedal CC, um, Mbappe Baze sold there. Um, I actually don't remember exactly the, the amount, but if I had to guess, I believe it was 400. Uh, and was a PSA 8 or a, or a PSA 9? I, I'm not sure, but... Uh, just shows w- w- what you are saying that uh, even the buys specific for for key players, of course, uh, are still selling quite uh, quite strong. Um, I, actually, th- this was not part of of the the questions I, I had for you, but uh, you also ended up talking uh, a couple of times about. Uh, l- let's now forget the buys, even the colors, that uh, yeah. y- you find them uh, um, f- fascinating in, in the long run, in the sense that. Uh, I guess I will speak for myself, but I would love also to know to know your perspective on this. That uh, the thing about uh, travel remembers me top scrum a bit in the sense that you don't have a lot of parallels. You know, you have uh, blue, purple, uh, green, uh, gold, and, and I think that that that's it, right? And uh, nowadays, when when you look at the new products, is a complete mess. You have gold leather, you have. Uh, <laughs> Purple with 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 pink bubbles is is such such is is shameful. Let, let, let's be real, and uh, becomes it's crazy. <laughs> becomes very even well, if look, you want I to mean, collect, is difficult. No, go go ahead, go ahead. Well, look, I mean, the, they're just beautiful, right? That's the green, the Dybala. Ooh, the, 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 the green, green the green is not is not appearing. Show it more. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh Dybala. That that that's a nice yeah, one. Sorry, that's the the. Uh, that's a nice there's one. There's a gold. There's a gold Venetius. That, no, that, no that, that. That's a great card. Uh, all, 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 all many go, uh, Vinicius you had at one point because I, I believe you. I had going. 11. 11 oh my God. That's crazy. You, you, know, you know what I think I was in on this one for? Uh, 40 bucks. Oof. That's crazy. Honestly, when actually, this is a fun story. When, the, when Vinicius Jr., even before the Piney Trouble ran, when Vinicius Jr. started playing well, I remember looking at this market uh, and uh, I saw everyone talking about the Optic card uh, and uh, at the time I was not even aware of the Panini Treble set, uh, but I saw it on eBay. I believe Propstein uh, had a couple of auctions going for uh, for some, I believe it was a blue and a purple. And I thought, I don't know a lot about this set, but it looks so much better than, uh, than the Optic. Uh, so it's crazy that uh, nowadays people... If people have never held these in their hand, they are they are different. They feel no, they they different. they look really nice. That, that that's true. They they look really especially really in nice. a in a holder. I, I think they they're tough to beat in a in a slab. Yeah, the the first time I had one um, was okay. No, I'm not sure, but one of the first times I was really impressed by one was a Cristiano Ronaldo purple. I actually bought that, that card in Portugal is crazy because what, what you said is interesting that you believe most of those cards are in Asia. And I also agree with that. Uh, when I was looking for them, I, I, had, I had to go to, to some contacts in Asia. But they are also in Europe a good a bit because um, basically at the time in 2018, people participating in breaks, they, they are all over the world and they are basically just collecting a specific player or a specific team. So... I was able to find, for example, a lot of uh, Bayern Munich cards in Germany, you know, and I was able to find uh, actually two Cristiano Ronalds in Portugal. So uh, basically people trying to chase what uh, what they like, w- w- what connect, connects with, with them. But the, the first time I had a Cristiano Ronaldo in, in end, I was like, oh my God, this card is, is insanely beautiful. Uh, if you look at, at the scans, uh, specific on uh, Pidal CC, eBay, they they look very <laughs> they, they they look very it's just a, it's a it's just a classic portrait like the exactly. the, the Mbappe is just such a like essence it's like the essence of his movement it's to me the best looking modern card right it's not it's not like a gimmick photo like you see with Stadium Club it's not like a, a like a Topps Chrome photo it's just an it's just a pure simple kind of movement photo yeah uh, and it, it and that's, and I think and, it's part of the appeal. <laughs> and but the, the thing is, beautiful to hold, you know. I know, I agree. And the, the thing is, like I was saying, when people saw the specific, even the colors, the the color variations in scans, they they look bad. But when you have them in hand, you understand why why so many people tend to like Panini Travel. And in the last year, 
so many Instagram accounts end up appearing. Piney Travel Collector, Piney Travel 2018 uh, is, is actually quite fascinating to, to see that the set is actually gaining some momentum. And people, people that said the set w- would uh, die one year ago, more than one year ago at one point, they are, lo- they are not looking that, uh, that well because I, I, I totally believe this set will perform uh, well long run. Will this pr- perform better than Top Scrum or Prism or, or other major set? I don't know, you know, but uh, it's, I think it's, this it's is a set that... to say because it's so unique because it's one exactly. off, right? And like I said, if, if 25 people get involved in it, then it, it really ups the value. Tell me it, one thing. we don't know. Do, 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 do you think if Panini makes another Panini Travel will be better for the set or worse? It's debatable. It's debatable, yeah. <laughs> I, I think the last thing we need is more, right? But, I kind of think leaving it as a one-off is kind of cool. Or maybe doing it once every 10 years would be kind of cool, right? Okay. Once every kind of generation. But but that's a great question, and I've thought about it, and I don't, I don't have the answer for that. I don't know. I don't but know I, else. Right now, I, I think probably not. I mean, that's I, the kind of the appeal, right? So that one year, just that one moment in time. Yeah. The, the, the thing I would say is imagine if they make a land panic travel, that card would go crazy. And uh, is, is basically there will be free marketing for the old panic travel. But in the other end, uh, and I tend to agree with you there. But they, they sell for like $5,000, right? A box. <laughs> and like, you know, wouldn't have the, it wouldn't have the same kind of appeal to it. Like, you're chasing guys like trying to find somebody in China that has a common for six dollars or something, you know. <laughs> no, I, I I can see that also. Yeah, makes makes sense. Yeah, but uh, great great stuff. So uh, moving on to the question number four, um, still talking about modern. Tell me your top three modern sets nowadays. Uh, if you want them to be related with Serie A, feel free. Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, I, I don't. It, it's tough. So. Because a lot of the, there's so much product, right? You know, yeah, I, nowadays I like to, it's crazy. I have, I have to think that eventually people are going to consolidate kind of around top scrum. Same thing happened in baseball in the 90s, right? There was Upper Deck and Don Russ and this and that. And then people just consolidated around tops as kind of these sets. And so I think that that might be the case with tops chrome in general. Um, yeah. I, I, but I, I'm trying and I am staying away from a lot of the new stuff. If, if there's one thing that I would I'm looking at, and I say this, I've said this a couple of times, it's just gold, ref, just the pure gold refractor. Okay. So it's not the it's not a set, but just any year, right? Because they only make fifty of them, and a player might only have, especially if they're in and out of the Champions League or Europe, they might only have two hundred, right? And you know, if you collect, you know, a player that that might be something that might might be valued to have their gold refract their their pure gold refract not their atomic or their japanese or their steve aoki or whatever version it is right just the pure gold refractor True i like that I've, I've actually been getting involved in um the old calcio sets the panini calcio and oh, the I, s- from I saw. In the 90s i saw your last yeah, video i, on I that. think those are speaking of beautiful cards um well there's the zidane right yeah, Which, yeah. by the way, the pop on these is is twenty for the whole set. <laughs> There's the Zidane Calcio one. There's a Toddy. I mean, just really cool. Like how many how many cards did Zidane have during his playing days? I, I think these are undervalued, to be honest with you. But who knows? Particularly the Merlin, which is which is which right now has a very very low pop. I I, I don't know, but they're they're interesting, right? That you can get these very very cheap, and they're the actual playing days of a of a of a of a player like we're not the original ronaldo but there's an early buffon card in his parma jersey okay so quick pause on this one but trust me is an important message recently i became affiliated with bdlcc and uh, i believe they are the best in the business uh, if you like to buy pre-modern and modern uh, and even vintage they are uh, probably the best place you can find uh, for the soccer card market uh, if you want to support the channel and you don't need to pay me anything just click on the links i will leave below the video for pdlcc or you can even scan the qr code you are seeing on the screen uh, apart from that i will try to keep all the links updated instead of just sending you to PLCC direct I will try from time to time to send you to a deal that I find quite amazing there that said let's continue with this video and I hope you have fun uh, the, the, the thing about this uh, about those cards is uh, recently actually um, not sure if you are aware but there is numbered cards for, for that Merlin set there are they are and impossible to find <laughs> yeah, they are. I think only that three is... or four have ever been graded 
Yeah, no, they, they, they are really, really difficult. To, but the, the thing with the base set, uh, just my experience, I, I don't think they are super difficult to find, but they tend to be difficult to grade. Uh, speci- not sure That's about the thing. Exactly. Not, not sure about Merlin, so, but we, you may have numbers, but uh, even the Panini Calcio cards, they, 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 they always tend to be quite difficult. They they are. I actually have a one of the two Zendon uh, PSA 10s, 98. Oh, that's nice. Um, because I it, it popped up and it was like $200. And I was like, because I, I don't think there's going to be a lot of 10s. Okay. Uh, the Merlin, I think, are going to be very tough to grade too. So as a, as a counter to all the pr- print run right now, you might want to look at those, particularly if you're kind of an old time collector, know the names. I mean, the, the, the checklist is phenomenal, right? Um, and... But you have to. My opinion on the on playing those would be to try to play them to get good to get quantity because those will actually have condition rarity, right? Where you're only going to see a couple tens, a couple nines. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. I, I recently had a question on my Patreon about uh, uh, calcio cards versus mega cracks, and the the I, I gave a, a long answer, but trying to in a couple of points share with you what I said there is that. Uh, I believe Mega Cracks, the, the basically the, the the Spanish brands, they they did very well because of Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi. Uh, since those mm-hmm. are are so rele- are such relevant players, people really research yep. their careers. And um, my perspective about Calcio cards is that uh, they they have some room to grow, to be honest, because uh, the seems more an explored market compared with the Spanish one or even the Portuguese at, at, at this point, uh, even though the Portuguese Mega Cracks is, is quite more difficult than, than the Spanish. But the, the Italian cards, um, specifically if you can find top grades, PSA 9s, but even more the PSA 10s, I think they, 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 they could be um, nice to hold the long, uh, long run. Um, and I guess you are already doing that, right? Yeah, and it's a it's a what in my opinion is a low risk thing, right? I mean, you can buy these cards for five or six dollars, have them graded, and at the worst case scenario, you have a graded Zidane from his playing days, you mm-hmm. know, for twenty five bucks, you know, or all, all in, right, or or fifty, whatever it may be. And if you hit a ten or a nine, there, there's an opportunity for those to go up. That's kind of the low risk scarcity kind of thing that I I try to play as a as an alternative to today's mass production right now. Yeah, if that I, makes I, sense I, to you. That's no, I agree. I agree. I, I believe those those cards, the the, the Merlin uh, specific, the numbered cards are the first numbered cards ever in soccer. I'm just I not. Think it sh- might be. It may be. Maybe there is some Futera stuff, but some people may not count that uh, because I know Futera. Even uh, I believe in early 2000s in the nineties, they they did some uh, some numbered stuff. But uh, honestly, as a product that I, I don't track that that close. But basically, sure. official product. I, I would bet many those. Those are probably the the, the first uh, real numbered cards, the, the Merlin stuff. And and yeah. and it's cool that right now we also have Merlin products in modern. I think the connection is also. I think it actually helps there. them. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with that. Tie, the brand tie. Yeah. Um, so, but basically, you you did not tell me your top three sets, right? Well. I, <laughs> Gold refractors. Okay. Oh, so you, you go <laughs> more than Okay. <laughs> Even though that's not modern. And um, I, I, I again start looking for, I, I don't buy sets per se. I, I kind of look for players, right? Okay. The, the hottest player that I think makes some sense right now is uh, Tell for Bayern Munich as a striker. One rookie card. It's a Merlin card. I think that kind of makes sense. But I, I'm typically looking for players and I'm not huge on the sets. Okay, no, makes sense. Actually, related with that, do do you think Merlin, uh, um, specific even the first year, 2020, can be a set that does well long run? The, the reason I'm asking this is, if you really think about uh, um, a lot of players, they just have rookies there or is one of the, yeah. the, the few options. I think it's safer to play the guys who have only their rookie card there. Okay, so not yeah, I, the I entire set, it. just the Yeah, the and, and maybe will, maybe won't. But I think there's a lot of factors that go into that, right? What they do with the brand strategy, et cetera. But if you can get a guy that has one rookie card and just in that set or just two, and that's one of them, then I think it makes I think it makes sense to buy the guys who are only in that set. Okay, for sure. I mean, yeah, it's, it's still risky uh, collecting the Merlin set. Actually, I'm, I'm a believer in the set long run because I don't see top stopping doing the Merlin set 
And like you said, that eventually everything goes back to Chrome. And I also tend to agree with that. The, the thing is, I think the sets that will go back to Chrome is the sets that are not doing something unique. I th and I think Merlin is, is doing something unique because they, they have the Europa League license and not just the, the UEFA Champions League. That, that's why they they have so many different rookies uh, that Top Scrum cannot have because Top Scrum is just Top Scrum Champions League. Um, but yeah, yeah interesting stuff. And uh, to finalize this, uh, hot take slash unpopular opinion about the soccer card market. Um, you know, I, I I sometimes think a couple things, right? I I'm a, not an autograph guy, right? <laughs> I've Me never neither. seen an autograph card that has gone up has gone up in value, right? Uh, after it's been released, and people spend four or five thousand dollars on these autographs, they're going to sign for the next fifty years. Holland's going to sign. Till, till he's 90 years old, maybe long. No, right? so I, I don't people think, forget I don't about think it, that. <laughs> no, that, that, so that's I, true. I, I mean, dangerous. <laughs> so that, the, that, but that just makes logical sense to me. Um, unless it's a rookie auto, that's a little different. But the regular autos, that don't make a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. I think data science and some of this market cap stuff will continue to play a role in as we move forward, right? We're just becoming more connected from a, you know, who has what and what, what, how many, you know, Mbappe trebles exist, right? And what the market cap of that card will be. If you believe in soccer long term, I think there are a few defenders that could be undervalued that okay. have limited rookie cards, right? Because right now there nobody wants a defender. Nobody wants a defensive midfielder, but I, I think like if you believe 10 years down the road, there's a good chance that Ruben Diaz could be considered the best defender of this decade. And you could get a rookie card of his pretty cheap right now. That That's that's a way to play long term. Maybe, maybe not. I think a lot of it depends on whether more Europeans get into, this, into it or not. Um, but who knows? And then, like I said, we just talked about some of the Merlin Calcio and Panini Calcio stuff. I think that stuff maybe pops up a little bit as another kind of hot take there. Okay. No, that's fair. I mean, um, just to the thing about uh, auto, uh, autographs, I also I also have to say that I agree with that. Specific because um, it's crazy how, how what uh, triggers me the most is when I see a random uh, Christian Ronaldo or Messi auto uh, second year obsidian going automatic for 1k, 2k. I, I, I don't understand that. I, I think I could be wrong again, but I think people will regret those type of buys long run because uh, the pressure on the market will be so, so high when it comes to, to autos. Uh, like you said, if it's a super relevant card, and sometimes, let, let's say, a rookie card, that's a bit different because at least the history on the card is there. But when the card is totally random and you are paying a premium just because of the auto, I mean, I, I really believe people will regret those type of buys long uh, long run because the, the fundamentals are, are basically not, not there. I think we're in agreement. <laughs> no, yeah, no, for sure. And look, this is something that seems obvious for a lot of people. But when I look on eBay and PDLCC, those type of sales, they they, they happen every day. It's, it's actually quite it, crazy. It, the, the interesting thing, Andre, is going to be what happens when autographs don't move product. Because right now, Tops and Panini are making their money by inserting autographs. And then they're selling, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of cases and boxes based on people chasing autographs eventually that's going to run out in my opinion so it'll be interesting where the market goes from there because i, I don't five years from now will st people still be spending five six hundred dollars a box to chase autographs i don't i don't know but right mm -hmm. now that's the driving the driving factor of new product and i, I think it's going to cool off but we'll see no for sure um Great stuff, my friend. Really enjoyed this this conversation. I hope you also had fun. Uh, feel free to yeah, share. Uh, of course. <laughs> feel free to share some final thoughts if you want. Uh, and can, can uh, I ask one question of you? No, for for sure. What what? Because this is from me sitting in the United States to you sitting in Portugal. I, I'm curious: is the market growing in Europe? And I really think that's the key to all of this, right? I mean, you know, um, is is the European market growing? No, yeah, for sure. I mean, I know that, look, I also want to be realistic. USA is still the, the, the main force mm -hmm. in the market, no no doubt. And it will be fool to say that Europe is, is getting there. It's not yet. 
but if uh, if you we compare the market uh, so I, I started collecting uh, soccer in specific uh, early 2020 late 2019 I, I don't remember exactly but I know it was around those those that, that time and uh, I believe just talking for Portugal by the way no one was collecting soccer I mean uh, collecting soccer in in a way that we know now graded cards basically Right now, we have a good amount of collectors and uh, we are also seeing that in Europe that there is a lot of shows appearing uh, right now. The Lon London Card Show is very popular. I believe there is another super popular in Germany. I, I know there is some rumors that, that there will be one in Portugal soon. Uh, I think those are, are, are great news. I mean, it takes time. Mm -hmm. because sometimes it's basically is not... Is is like the, the the education, you know. In America, um, sports cards have been a thing uh, for so long, and uh, in Portugal, in Spain, in Germany, collecting have been a thing, but relating money with collecting was not. You, you know what, yeah. what I'm trying to say. And there is a shift right now. I, I would say something that is impacting our market even more right now is the Asian market because those guys are paying really, really uh, big money for uh, specific modern, specific high-end, specific mm -hmm. Messi, specific uh, Ronaldo's to, to be fair, not uh, random cards, but they are paying a lot of money and I think that will have a huge impact in, in our market. But short answer, yes, it is growing in Europe. Good. I think that's great for the health of the market. Right? No, I, I think if, like we said, if these Panini troubles are going to be worth money in the future and go up... Or then the, the European market and the Asian market's got to be there too. Yeah, th this is a, the type Thank of... Thank you again, Andre. For sure, yeah. Just one thing. This is the, the, the type of thing that uh, you don't see right away. You know, this takes a couple of years for you. Look, if you look right now... So I said that right now versus two years ago is different. But uh, for some people, may still... Uh, it's still more or less the same. I believe this will be more evident in five years, ten years, you know, long run... Because it takes time, uh, is is almost a compounding effect that uh, is slow, but uh, all of a sudden we we have uh, we have uh, a big thing. But yeah, uh, feel free to to share the your final thoughts. So this is the deal, my friends. I know a lot of you like to listen to the Talking Cards podcast on YouTube, but I also have a good audience that likes to listen to the podcast on Spotify or Apple. If that's the case, leave a review there. It tends to help the channel quite a lot and for you, so easy. So have that in consideration. No, I, I agree. Uh, one card I wanted to show you is the Sala card. I think that's the highest graded numbered Sala <laughs> hobby rookie card. Okay, what, one question right for now, that even card. Even though it's a seven, I think it's the highest grade. It's the purple one. Oh, and it's that, one of the things I use my strategy at the beginning to find it, a low pop hobby rookie card. And I, I like that card, that but tell me card. one thing. Don't you think that card have a problem in the sense that is with Chelsea and Liverpool fans <laughs> may not like that? I, I, may, I don't know, right? Maybe, but 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 the people who might I, buy I like are, the card, by the way, are, are, are just fans of his. You know what I mean? So I, I think in the long run, that doesn't matter. It, it hasn't in any other sport. OK, no, so that, that's fair. Soccer. Maybe. Maybe it takes a few people out of the equation, but I don't think it takes everybody out of the equation. No, because that, it's rare. Is is number out of what? The purple? This one is numbered out of 50. It's number 40 out of 50. And the, the, there is other numbered cards in the set, or is it just purple? There is um there's a out of 10 and there's an out of 60. So I think there's like very few, maybe 170 numbered cards, and only three or four have been graded. And it's now eleven years old, and it's gonna have condition rarity if you find them. So okay. we'll see where this ends up in the in the scheme of things. But right now, according to PSA, that's the best one. So. Oh, for sure. Well, thank you so much, my friend, again. Uh, I'll repeat myself one more time, but it was a pleasure. I, I, I thought it was important for you to, to share your story, to share your, your system of approaching the market. Uh, and like I said at the beginning, sometimes I don't agree, but I, I recognize that you put a lot of time into this. And for me, that, that, that means that matters a lot. Uh, so, yeah, I, mean, I think we have to do an, another podcast uh, in the future. <laughs> I because think we came out pretty much on the same page on a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, for sure. I, 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 again, the, the, the only thing I, I slightly disagree with you, that, that's why I was mentioning, is the prospecting sometimes for me is risky because of that variable that we don't control at all, that is performance. Yeah. But the way you approach the market, you can approach, you can pick your idea and look at the Messi market and the Cristiano Ronaldo and apply that, you know, that, okay, what are the key cards? What are the cards that uh, 
the, the, the market cap is low and um, can this grow? Can I, yeah. I think you all of that is great. Current stars like exactly. Like Miller is a good example, low low pops, or you could use it for prospecting. Exactly. Just my take is if you want to limit your downside, make sure you focus on guys that have a few cards. Scarcity is a basic big thing. No, I agree. Again, thank you so much. See you guys next time. Thank you, Andre. No, for sure, my friend. Do not forget to leave a like Talk and. See you guys next time. Bye. And that's everything for today, my friends. I really hope you end up enjoying this video. If that's the case, and I know I'm annoying with this, but do not forget to leave a like. It helps tremendous. Also, subscribe to the channel. Take a look at all the links I leave below the video. I tend to leave surprises there, or even scan the QR code you are seeing on the screen. Bye.